The Your Safe Space podcast is recorded on Wurundjeri land. This podcast acknowledges the traditional owners and custodians of the land. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Welcome to Your Safe Space, the podcast. I'm your host, Adele Marie, and this podcast is here for you. It is a safe space for us to catch up each week to discuss anything and everything. And on today's show, we are talking about boundaries. Hello, you guys. How are you? What is going on in your world? Elephant in the room. If you're watching on YouTube, you may notice something different. I'm in a beautiful new studio recording today. It is incredible. The novelty is definitely happening. It hasn't worn off. I'm very excited to be recording. This is the second episode I've recorded today. And I'm just really happy to firstly be in a beautiful space. This looks very different to the last studio that I was in. It feels better as well, energetically. And I kind of had a running joke that it wasn't a very professional production, but I want it to be a professional production for you guys. And, you know, obviously, You would have known the recent situation that I found myself in, but we're testing out this studio today and I'm a little nervous because I've got Derek in the room. Derek is our producer and he's looking after our audio, making sure that we sound perfect the whole way, making sure that there aren't going to be any problems for us down the track. But you guys know the drill. As always, our highlights, gratitudes and struggles. I share mine. I want you to think about yours, hold some space for yours. And I want you to come into the Facebook group and share yours because every Monday we put up the post. I love, love reading them. And I want to know what you guys are going through. My highlight, I've just talked about it. It's recording in the studio. I was thinking about other things, but I thought, no, this is definitely the highlight of my week. And yeah, I've already covered that, but I'll also talk about my gratitude, which is I spent some quality time with my friends over the weekend. I saw my best friend, Suze. I saw another friend, Ricky. I then saw Steph as well. And it was just nice for me to fill my cup up that way because you guys would know February has been a little bit of a challenge with me with Sam away. And so I haven't had, I don't know, as much quality time with friends uh, as I would like. And so, yeah, it's been, it's been really lovely. And I also end up going on a Galentine's dinner, which I'm recording this on Tuesday, so I'm going on the dinner tonight. I was going to say, oh, it was really lovely, but I haven't even been yet. But I will be going tonight with my friend Zoe. She asked me out. So I was like, of course, we can have a gals dinner. And I'm kind of happy about that because as you guys know, I was doing nothing and I was happy to do nothing, but even happier to do something with Zoe. And then my struggle, I did speak about this in the Facebook group and maybe a bit TMI, but have been having a little patch of like loneliness. And I think I go through these patches and I'm very hyper aware of when I'm going through them. I'm in one now. I don't know if it's Valentine's Day. I don't know if it's because my birthday is coming up. I'll talk about that as well in another upcoming episode. I want to do an episode on like 30 things I learned in my 20s and then another one about aging because I'm having lots of things happen in my head, you guys. And then mum, skip ahead a little bit because I know you listen to this podcast, but um, it's also been a hot minute, guys, since I've been intimate. So um, I think it's a combination of all those things, which is a little bit frustrating at the moment, but I'm trying to obviously meet my own needs and yeah, just navigate that. I also was meant to have therapy today, but I've had to push the appointment back to next week. So I'll chat to my psych about that next week. Now, I also want to say if you have had a hard week, I'm thinking of you. I'm sending you so much love. I know that not every week is a good one, but it is a new week tomorrow and hopefully we can start again and hopefully it's a little bit better. Now into today's show, you guys, I am so excited because we are talking about boundaries. I'm going to go through what boundaries are and I have been hanging to do this episode since November, December last year. I kept putting it in the polls and you guys kept not voting for it, but this week you finally voted for it. So thank you. I'll also unpack why I love them. Also unpack why you guys love them because I asked you for some feedback for this episode. And then I will give you an activity on how to figure out your own boundaries. So that will be a journal activity, a practical one. And then we have some juicy listener questions. So let's get right into it. As always, I like to start with the definition. And so the definition of a boundary is an invisible line that you draw around yourself to identify what is acceptable behavior and what is unacceptable behavior. Boundaries are different for everyone. I will have different boundaries, you will have different boundaries, and they will vary based on our upbringing, our culture, our personality traits, and the social impacts. 
They are also very fluid, which I love because that means they will evolve and change and almost grow with us as we grow as well. And I have found that as I've aged, I've also gotten better at identifying them, setting them and practicing them or enforcing them. Now, there are many different types of boundaries and I'm going to go through the most common ones. There are probably some more out there, but these are the ones that I found in the research for the episode. So the first one is physical boundaries. Now, these are boundaries that are referring to your personal space and your body. And if I can give you an example, it would be like when you meet somebody for the first time, are you shaking their hand? Are you giving them a hug? Are you giving them a kiss on the cheek? Or it's, you know, if someone sits too close to you, maybe it looks like moving away because you don't want to sit that close to somebody, or maybe you don't want to shake the hand or don't want to hug them or don't want to kiss them hello. That is what I'm referring to when I'm talking about physical boundaries. We then have mental and emotional boundaries. So these are your thoughts, your values, your opinions, and understanding your feelings versus the feelings of others. And it also looks like understanding that you're not responsible for how others feel. And it also goes for not oversharing, not invalidating yourself, not criticizing yourself, and also not doing that for others. If I, again, will give you an example of this, it could look like telling someone, I don't want to discuss this when you don't want to discuss something. Or it could be, I was hurt when this happened or you did this to me and I'd like you not to do that again. That's another example of enforcing a mental or emotional boundary. We then have financial boundaries. So these include how you spend money, how you save money, how you give money, how you budget money. An example of this, and we actually had it come up in the AMA this week, but it could be your thoughts on lending money to friends or people you know. It could be saying to your friend, I'm on a budget. So that restaurant or going out to eat doesn't really work well for me. Maybe we can go for a walk instead, things like that. We've then got sexual boundaries. So firstly, this is your right to consent. And then it's your comfort levels around physical touch, intimacy, and sexual behaviors. If I can give you some examples there, that might look like you might not want to sleep with somebody on the first date, or you might not want to sleep with somebody until you have that emotional connection, or you might want to sleep with somebody on the first date, or that is verbalizing what you do and don't like in the bedroom. We then have moral boundaries. And so these are about your core values. And I would say that these are almost like the non-negotiable ones, not the most important. They're all very important, but these are usually things to do with like fidelity, drug and alcohol use, violence, very heavy things like that. And then lastly, we have spiritual boundaries. So these are about your religious beliefs or your spiritual beliefs. And at the same time, like your lack of them, if you don't have any boundaries will exist in our relationships, our friendships, our workplaces at home, in public, they will exist everywhere. And they represent structure, order and rules for living. For me personally, I really struggled with them until I became aware of them and until I learned how to use them, which I think I would owe therapy that because that really taught me what they were, how to identify them and how to start practicing them. And I know that some of you listening to this may also feel like you struggle with your boundaries. I just want to say that's okay. (laughs) It's very normal. We aren't really taught these things. And unless we are taught them, it can be really hard to know how to do it or to know how to practice it. And so I will explain some of the reasons you guys might struggle. And I just want to do this to kind of validate you if you are someone who feels like you struggle with them. So the first reason is, as I said, you may have not been shown or taught them in your childhood. So I always talk about like our caregivers and our parents and our upbringing. And sometimes we may have been raised by caregivers who didn't display boundary setting. And so subconsciously we learn that behavior and then that impacts how we then go on to act as an adult. The next reason that you might be struggling with boundaries is that you may identify as a people pleaser or a good girl or a good guy. So this looks like you being very worried about upsetting others. It looks like you putting other people before you because you want to put everyone else before yourself. And it also looks like taking on more than you can handle. So it doesn't appear like you can't do it or that you aren't enough. That's a very quick way to get burnt out and also add. And then lastly, you might be able to relate to this in struggling with your boundaries if you were the caretaker child. So what that means is 
growing up, you may have taken on the role of the parent or you may have taken on a mature role, even though you were a child and you needed to be taken care of because you were almost expected to parent and be a parent. And so you might have been told that you were very mature for your age and you now may struggle as an adult when you do things for yourself because you might tend to feel selfish or like it makes you selfish for putting yourself first. Now, the good thing is all of us already have what we need within. So even if you feel like you're not very strong with boundaries, I'm going to hopefully give you some practical tips in this episode to learn and get better at it. And a lot of us will also already have boundaries in place, sometimes without even knowing them or communicating them. It's just going by what we feel. And I want to obviously bring that awareness in this episode. Before I get into the practical tips, I'm going to give you the reasons why I love them. And then I'm going to give you the reasons why you love them. So I did ask you guys for some input in this episode. I'm so grateful that you did submit something. But the reason I love boundaries is because they help me live authentically. They help me honor my self-concept and my sense of self. They help me have better relationships, firstly with myself, but then everybody else. I noticed that when I started practicing my boundaries and enforcing them, that all of my relationships improved. And I definitely wouldn't go back to how I was living before. They also protect me from things. They protect me from situations that I don't want to be in. They protect me from people. They help me practice self-awareness. They help me practice self-care. They help me practice self-compassion and self-love. And ultimately, they just help me live a life that feels good to me. And I always talk about how that's like my guiding, I guess, focus. And some of the reasons that you guys love them I love these so much, but these are submitted from you. The first one, they create self-respect. Love that. Secondly, they protect my inner peace. They lift a weight off my shoulders. Yes. It shows others how to treat you. It is a respectful way to keep a relationship healthy for you both while still keeping your values. They make my relationship stronger. They show the threshold of the morals I find most important. It's a form of self-care. They protect my energy. They make me feel secure. They allow me to practice my core beliefs. I love those, you guys. Thank you so much for sending them in. As I said, getting clear on your boundaries does take time. It does take effort. It does take practice. But as you can see from reading off those, it can be quite worth it and is something that I would really recommend. Now, I've spoken about it many times on this podcast, but when you don't put yourself first, when you sacrifice what you really want, when you sacrifice yourself for everybody else, resentment can start to build, not only for yourself, but for others. And that can also then trickle down and cause us to behave in ways or live in a way that doesn't feel very good. And so I'm going to give you an activity to figure out what your boundaries are. And as always, grab a journal or your notes app or whatever. If you're walking at the moment or you're driving, that's fine. You can come back to this part in the episode when you are sitting down. But I'm just going to give you three prompts. And with any activity, I always say practice self-compassion, practice kindness. We're not judging ourselves. We are just trying to dig a little deeper. We're getting the information. The first prompt is how do you like being treated? So I want you to think about how you like being treated. Think about all the areas that I spoke about before, physical, mental, emotional, financial, sexual, moral, spiritual. Think about the people in your life too and think about how you want to be treated in the best way possible and write down those things, write down those words, those sentences. There's also no right and wrong. There's no limit or requirement. So you can write as little or as much as you like, but just writing all of those down. And again, it's almost like thinking in a perfect world, what would it look like? write all of those down. The second part of the activity is to look at your current boundaries. So I want you to think about right now your existing relationships, your existing relationships with your friends, your family, your partners, work. What feels good in those relationships? Writing everything down that feels good. I then want you to write down what feels bad in those same relationships. And again, no judgment, we're not doing this to, to do anything bad. We're just simply gathering the information. I then want you to also think about moments when something happened and you spoke up and how that made you feel 
And I want you to also think about moments when you didn't speak up, but you wanted to and how you felt after not saying something. And the reason I want you to do that is because once you have the second part of the prompt done, I want you to go back and compare it to the first part to see if there's a difference or to see if you are already living quite close with your boundaries or with your dream boundaries. And then the last prompt for the activity is to look back at old patterns and the past. I want you to think about going back to, you know, past relationships that you were in or past friendships that have ended or even your childhood. Who were you close to? Who did you feel safe around? Who let you down? And it's really taking a look to see if there are any patterns from childhood to to now as an adult and just bringing that awareness to past history. So writing that all down, as I said, this activity is to create awareness. I always say that you can't really change anything if you don't have that starting point and you don't have that base foundation to go from. So looking at where we're currently at and then moving and taking steps in the right direction. It's almost like a scale. If you are feeling like you're down on this end where boundaries are really hard for you and you really struggle with them, you can absolutely move to the other side slowly. And I definitely think it's possible. I've done it. And hopefully with that activity that can help you start on the right foot. Now I am going to give you some example boundaries from the community. Again, submitted by you guys. These are so beautiful and I want to share them. Some of them I already do, but let's dive straight in. The first one, my friends respecting my boundary of not drinking in a social setting. I love that. It sounds like you have good friends. This one made me laugh. My side of the bed is my side of the bed and don't ever try to sleep on it. (laughs) That's true. I sleep on the right side of the bed. What side of the bed do you guys sleep on? I like to train at the gym by myself without a gym buddy. I also love a solo gym session. This one is something that I definitely need to steal. I withdraw from a disagreement immediately if they begin yelling or swearing at me. And I love that so much. That is a very powerful one. This one, I use my intuition to set my boundaries. If it doesn't feel right, I don't do it. And yes, I would say I do that too, but sometimes it can be really hard for people to rely on intuition, especially if you are someone that struggles with anxiety. It can be often hard to differentiate anxiety and intuition. And I will do another episode on that down the track. I love this one. Not tolerating toxic friendships or relationships. Yes. Making it very clear to my partner that alone time is needed for X amount of time each week. And love that one too. This one is a goodie. Not staying back at work when I don't want to or I feel drained. Saying no. Yes, we love saying no. Saying no because it doesn't sit with my values or who I want to be. Telling my partner that I need time and space alone to debrief. Always communicating when I am uncomfortable with something or it doesn't sit right with me. I love that one so much. We had another saying no. (laughs) We have not spending 24-7 time together with my partner. We love that too. And guys, I want you to come into the Facebook group. Let me know if you have any more. The reason that I really wanted to read those out and share them is because we can borrow other people's if they feel good for us. It's another element of if you are struggling to unpack your own, sometimes hearing someone else's or seeing someone else's or reading someone else's helps you get there too. So come and join us in the Facebook group. There will be a post for this episode and we can unpack the rest of them there. Now we are into the listener questions. These were the most commonly asked ones and I've got three. So we'll dive into question number one. How do I know what is an acceptable boundary? Now, as I said before, they are so different for all of us, they are so personal. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that your boundary is unacceptable. And I would hate for somebody to tell me that my boundaries are unacceptable. I just like to make sure within myself that they are reasonable. And what I mean by reasonable is they're not unrealistic and they feel good for me. So as long as I know logically that they make sense and I feel safe with them and they feel good for me, that is enough. I would give that same advice to you. If it makes sense to you and it feels good for you, then I would say that's all you really need. Doing the activity I gave you obviously will help too. You do need to know what you stand for and where to start and that will help you set solid boundaries moving forward. I think there are also circumstances and this really depends on other people as well having their boundaries, but 
I would say aim for that balance if you're trying to set a boundary and another person has a boundary that is very different for you. Find a way that you can almost both have your needs met or both have that boundary met with respect, with compassion, with kindness. But as long as it's not unreasonable or unrealistic and it feels good for you, then I would say it's acceptable. Question number two, what to do if someone doesn't honor a boundary that you have set? This is interesting because I think it depends again on the boundary. There are maybe little boundaries that someone might not honor and it might not be a very big deal, but then there may be really big non-negotiable ones that are a little bit more serious. And with everything, I would say communicate it, communicate, 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 communicate why it's important to you. If it is one of those moral boundaries that is significant and means a lot to you, in some cases, you may need to walk away. In some cases, you may need to weigh up if the person, the thing or the situation is is actually serving you. And with that non-negotiable or those moral boundaries, if you want it to have meaning or if you want it to have depth to it, I think you have to be willing to follow through on it when someone doesn't honor it. Again, it can be quite dangerous when you set those boundaries and then don't enforce them or let the other person, I guess, infringe on them because then it just teaches the other person that they cannot honor it again. And it teaches them that that behavior is okay. And it teaches them that you will tolerate that. And so in this question, I would say it's really about like sticking up for yourself. It's really about having your own back and really focusing on keeping that relationship with yourself and honoring that boundary for yourself. But again, dependent on what boundary it is. And then the last question where, what are your top tips for practicing boundaries? So I'm just going to give you three and then we'll wrap the show. But the first tip is to get comfortable saying no. I think I've spoken about this a few times. Saying no is a whole answer. You guys say no to the things, no to the people, no to the places, no to anything that you want to say no to. I know it can be really hard, especially if you are someone that can't say no or you feel like it's really hard for you. And so if that is you, literally practice. I want you to go stand in front of the mirror and practice saying no with confidence. Practice saying no with the body language of someone who is confident. Practice saying no with you being in control and keep practicing until it feels like that. It actually gets easier the more that you do it. It can be a little bit uncomfortable at the start, but very worth it once you get used to doing it. Tip number two is to start small. So again, if this is difficult for you, take it slow. Practice your boundary setting in very small moments and build your confidence from there. Again, it's like a muscle. The more you use it, the better you get at it. The more you use it, the stronger you get at it. I would say some like little tips here. It looks like waiting to make decisions. I love saying, you know, I'll get back to you on that or let me think about it. I'm not ready to make a decision now. Having that backup, I guess, response ready to go so you can buy yourself some time. And this also looks like practicing being very direct and clear with what you are saying. And I even notice it on my podcast. Like I'll say, oh, I think this, and then I'll go and say what I want to say, but just say what you want to say without saying, I think, or having those filler words or filler responses as well, being really clear and direct. And then my last tip is to do it for yourself and your inner child. I know that it can be scary. (laughs) You're worried about what others will say. You're worried about what they will think. But living like that and letting that guide you can keep you stuck in like a very, a very dangerous cycle of self-doubt. And if you are somebody who then goes and does all these things for other people when they don't want to, you can start to have that guilt seep in and that sets you up for overextending yourself and being burnt out like I spoke about before. Boundary setting, yes, is uncomfortable, but It is really okay to set them and enforce them. It is okay to sometimes let others down. It is okay to put yourself first. I've also noticed the right people will behave in line with your boundaries. The right people in your life that genuinely care and genuinely love you are not going to be bothered by your boundaries. They know that you're setting them because you want the relationship. Setting a boundary doesn't mean that you're trying to end the relationship. You're actually trying to keep the relationship. And so keeping that in mind, if you have people that in your life that are giving you difficulty with them. I will also add, I obviously don't have kids. You guys know that. But if you have kids, even better, because it's like, do it for yourself, but then know that you are modeling it for your children too. You're modeling the right behavior. And that's why I mentioned like inner child, because I think what behaviors do I want to allow? What am I teaching 
my younger self or kids, if you have kids, about self-respect, communication, independence, and problem solving. When I take care of me, I am doing it for my younger self and my future self. And what then happens is I start to show up better in every other element of my life, but it always starts with me. And so that's my last tip. And I think probably the most important one. Now, guys, that is it for the show. I know some of you who are listening to this would probably already be really good at doing this, really good at setting your boundaries. If that's you, amazing. Keep going. If you are somebody that has to work at it, be patient with yourself, be kind to yourself. It is absolutely possible. And I know that if you put in the effort or put in the work, you can definitely move from one side of the scale to the other. And lastly, I do have a duty of care to add that if this is something that you seriously struggle with and you want to work on with the help of a professional, I highly recommend it. Therapy or professional help does help with it. And I can confirm that I've got the evidence and the facts. So please check the show notes for some more resources there. And yeah, we will wrap the show here. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Derek. I'm really happy that we recorded in the new studio today. And you guys, if you aren't already, please come and join the Facebook group. It is Your Safe Space podcast community. Follow our Instagram, Your Safe Space pod and mine, Adele Marie. And please leave me a review on Apple or a rating on Spotify. And I would love, absolutely love if you could share it to your Instagram story when you're listening, because firstly, I love seeing where you guys listen. I also love seeing your dogs as well, or your cats or your pets. I love that. But it also helps me because as you know, podcasts don't have an algorithm and your support goes a long, long way. But thank you. Have the best week ahead. I hope something magical happens to you and I will see you next time. Bye guys.